Now, of course, Nintendo is constantly busy making new enemies and objects to put in games in order to keep it all fresh and interesting. Most of the time, this works out perfectly and we, the players, end up seeing something new and fun to mess around with. However, sometimes it also goes horribly wrong. They come up with something, but they have no idea what to do with it in the long run. And one good example of this is the Scuttlebug. Well, to an extent. It's a weird little creature that wasn't seen too much, sadly enough. And in the beginning, it was quite disappointing, but as time went on, things got better and better. So let's find out how they evolved in terms of use, design, story and gameplay. Now all of this started way back in the year 1996 when Nintendo was releasing a game set in a 3D world. Something which they hadn't really done before by that time. Most video game companies in the world had never created a game like that actually. So of course they had to experiment a lot when bringing old classic enemies to this new world and when designing completely new ones for it. Now most of this went completely fine and resulted in excellent enemies for the players to take on in their new adventure. But some were just really freaking weird, and the Scuttlebug was one of those enemies that actually confused me a lot. Now, they basically act the same as Goombas do in Super Mario 64. When you're in range, they will charge at you. And just like almost any foe seen in this game, they can be defeated by punching them or stepping on their heads. Now, in the end, we mostly saw them in Hazy Maze Cave and outside of Big Boo's Haunt. And there are only two differences between the Goombas and these new little creatures. They give you three coins instead of just one, which is nice I guess, and they can change the home area they patrol. That's literally it. Aside from that, they are basically the same. And of course, their design is quite weird and different. Quite special even, since that weird color combination on their body isn't seen in any other games. But to be honest, there are a lot of weird things in Super Mario 64 when it comes to designs. It all reminds me of old Windows games and early 3D models. Which does make sense. Nintendo just experimented with a lot of weird stuff they didn't really know much about, and so we got a combination of a lot of different looking things. Which they kind of proved in the remake as well. Because here the Scuttlebugs got a redesign to have black and yellow stripes, a distinctive head, legs of the same color as their bodies, and red suction cup-like feet. So now they look a lot more normal, and similar in a way to a real life creature, instead of being some sort of MS Paint nightmare. But what I want to point out is that their role in this game is... weird. It doesn't make sense to me, since they didn't have any special role whatsoever. It was just another roaming enemy that would bother you as soon as you got close to them. That's it. There weren't any cool or new mechanics tied to them, which is usually the case with anything new they introduce. So their purpose in this game was... Sort of non-existent in my opinion. I truly don't know why Nintendo made them and actually put them in the game. They could have put in almost any other foe like the Boos, a Koopa Troopa or even just normal Goombas. Now that I think about it, that would have been a better pick since most of those do have special properties. And sadly enough, they would remain in this awkward position for quite some time. Even the remake didn't fix any of this. They only altered their design and nothing else. And then when the next 3D title came out, Super Mario Sunshine, we saw another version of them that had a similar role to an extent. They are called Clambers, but they're also known as Scuttlebugs. And they are yellow metallic-like enemies that are seen in both Rico Harbor and Pianta Village. Now overall, they are the same as the ones seen in Super Mario 64. But this time around, they are seen climbing cages or walls, either vertically or upside down. And they can be defeated by kicking them or ground pounding. And all it can do is knock you off if you touch them. That's it. So just stay out of their way. Aside from that, they aren't really a big threat. And overall, quite similar to the first version we saw. But they can certainly make the platforming a lot harder at times since they are in your way after all. However, there weren't any exciting additions to them in this game to be honest. But luckily enough, their future was going to be different from these earlier two types. In time, Nintendo would actually come up with a better role for them. A redesign that made them so much more interesting. And they did this in New Super Mario Bros. The series that was made to revive the 2D Super Mario genre. And here the Scuttlebugs would finally start to shine because in this game their plan of attack is completely different. Instead of just running around and charging at you, they hang down from webs. 
they are seen in World 4-1 and 8-4, and what they do is repeatedly move up and down on strings, trying to hit you, and possibly even surprise you. In general, they became what I call a trap enemy, a foe that waits for the right time to strike, trying to catch the player off guard. And I gotta say, it does a pretty good job at this in the game. However, you don't really notice this in the beginning. And that's because in the very first world where we encounter them, they are pretty plain and just in your way. They don't really surprise you. However, eventually that would change. Because in the later world, they even drop down ceaselessly from the top of the world in pairs of two, giving the players the surprise of their life. But it gets even worse, because they detach from their webs almost immediately and drop onto the ground to give chase, similar to what they did in Super Mario 64. And in this level, they truly showed off that they were a trap enemy, since they had never done this before, and it would certainly surprise players. All of a sudden, these creatures were dropping down left and right. Clearly, Nintendo had a plan for them now, and turned these quite bad enemies into something more memorable. But while they are there to hinder the player and even take them out when possible, they can also prove to be useful. Because when they hang there, you can jump on top of them, giving you some extra height so you can reach certain places. Adding another layer to the enemy that it never had to be honest. So they were greatly improved, making them a good and interesting enemy all of a sudden. And all it took was a 2D redesign, allowing Nintendo to do something completely new with them. And they probably got the idea from an older enemy, the Sioux, which are spider enemies of the Eastern Kingdom found in the game Super Mario Land for the Game Boy. And they attack the same way as the Scuttlebugs in New Super Mario Bros. They try to drop on you from the ceiling. These were most likely the first spider enemies that were ever created by Nintendo. And it does fit with the game since it was designed by a completely different team that hadn't really made Mario games before. In general, this game and its sequels had very interesting as well as unique enemies. Which was pretty cool, actually. So it could be that Nintendo just copied the idea from this older enemy and applied it to the Scuttlebugs as well. They do this quite often, actually. If you take a look at all the different games and compare the enemies seen in them, you can clearly see a pattern. Another great example of this is a foe seen in the Super Mario Galaxy games known as the Spoing, who are actually quite similar to Scuttlebugs seen in New Super Mario Bros. These are brown-striped spiders who are mostly seen in Space Junk Galaxy and are found in large numbers along the path leading to Tarantox, a huge spider boss, but we will get back to that one later. They attack by jumping into the air and floating there for several seconds before falling back to the ground in hopes of landing on you. Although they can also be found hanging off a thread like the scuttlebugs do, and even do a fun spin when you star spin close to them. However, they aren't really a trap enemy though. They confront you head on and aren't really hard to spot, and they also don't pop up out of nowhere. So, from a fundamental standpoint, they don't function the same way. Their purpose and goals just very different. They are more similar to the first version of the Scuttlebugs, to be honest. An enemy that just attacks or is in your way. But regardless of that, it was clear that creating new enemies with abilities of older ones is something Nintendo does and loves to do as well. But hey, at least enemies like this are seen in more games, even modern ones. However, the Scuttlebugs sticked around longer than any of the other types. But what about the boss that I just mentioned? Well, this one is not really similar to the Scuttlebugs, but it was certainly interesting. He's found in the middle of a web, and you need to use his web as a slingshot and shoot Mario at his weak spots. Clearly, this boss is very different from the Scuttlebug and even Spoing, even when it comes to design. But still, it was a fun battle. Now, the Scuttlebugs were seen once again in the Nintendo 3DS game New Super Mario Bros. 2, and here they were finally separated from the version we saw in Super Mario 64. Now, they hang from their webs just like their new Super Mario Bros. incarnations, but they no longer walk around, so they won't chase you anymore. So they fully accepted their new role, and any features from their old design seen in the original 3D game are nowhere to be seen. Their appearance also changed once again. I'm not sure why, but for some reason Nintendo felt the urge to alter them once more. But they aren't really a trap enemy anymore. They don't really surprise you at all, which is a shame. And it's all because they don't chase you anymore and drop down out of nowhere. But after all of this, their transformation was basically done. They are now some sort of typical spider enemy, 
they completely lost their trap enemy characteristics. That was sadly enough only seen in New Super Mario Bros. However, while they did reach their final form and were a cool addition to the franchise, this is sadly enough where it ended. After this, they weren't really seen anymore in new titles like New Super Mario Bros U, Super Mario 3D Land and Super Mario Odyssey. They were gone. They weren't even included in Super Mario Maker 2. That game is all about 2D after all where the scuttlebugs became such interesting foes. But maybe we will see them once more in the future. They could always add more to the Maker game after all. I guess only time will tell.